Welcome to Spirituality Through Meditation. My name is Brian Higby, and today the title of this episode is Spirituality Through Meditation on Everything Everywhere. And essentially what this is about is we've covered a lot of different topics over the last few weeks, uh, several episodes talking about everything from meditation to contemplation to visualization to the subconscious, the conscious, um, to various states of consciousness from the beta, the alpha, the delta, um, the gamma, like these various states of consciousness, the theta. And today I'd like to summarize everything that hopefully will help everyone in their future. And when I started this, uh, I guess, rebranding of this YouTube channel, it was originally just Brian Higby with all of my short films and some silly videos and stuff that I had done over the years with a lot of my friends. But then a few months, um, or actually, I guess maybe six or so months ago, I started meditating. And I wanted to redirect that energy to something that was both creative but also helpful. And like, you know, the world of synchronicities, lots of things popped up on my social media feed, lots of videos, lots of tutorials about everything from astrophysics to quantum mechanics to mysticism to yogis to alchemy, um, hermetic philosophies, ancient cultures. Uh, frequencies, vibrational frequencies, energy, source, um, E equals MC squared, Einstein's quotes, uh, his formulas, um, Tesla's quotes about if you want to understand the universe, look at energy and vibrational frequency, and that will tell you everything about the universe. So I've learned a lot over the last several months, but it's been a lifelong, at least this cycle around, lifelong journey to discover this. So I'd like to talk about a few things, but starting off, I'd like to create the framework that fall under the following. Dharma, our life plan, free will, and karma. And I want to talk about these four items in together with um, the human mind, our conscious and our subconscious mind, and how maybe we can stack the deck and help ourselves out with the free will that we're given to achieve the life plan that we set for ourselves. So let's start with the definitions. So Dharma is the harmony of the universe. It's how everything is supposed to flow. Our life plan or our soul plan is something that we create as spiritual beings, beings of energy and consciousness. We create a life plan that we intend to fulfill lessons learned when we come to the school, which is called Earth. Earth is just a classroom where we learn and we teach. It's not a courtroom where we judge or get judged. We are here to learn and to live a certain life plan. And that is set by our higher selves before we're birthed into this material world. So we've got Dharma, we've got our life plan, we have free will. So we have the ability to choose anything we want that could go along with our life plan or that could go away from our life plan. And if you think of the life plan as a large tree and the life plan is the trunk and every time you move away from, you make a decision away from that life plan, you create a new branch, a new twig, a new leaf, so you're going away from that trunk, which is the life plan. Now, the last thing in this category is karma. And karma will bring you back, cycle you back into the material world if you haven't fulfilled your life plan. It's not a cause and effect thing so much as it is just pulling you back to what you originally had intended, your higher self had originally intended. 
So this isn't a mistake. This is something that your higher self, your all-knowing self, your self that exists in source, which is all-knowing, before thought, before ideas, before constructs, before the ego, that consciousness, that true thought consciousness is what came up with your life plan. So it's, it's pretty, a pretty good bet that you should follow it. So how can we stack the decks to fulfill our life plan so that we don't have to reincarnate into the material world if we choose not to? Okay, so let's look at the human consciousness, human mind. So we have two types of mind. We have the conscious mind, which is a 10% usage mind, which is the short-term memory mind. It's the analytical mind. The conscious mind is the mind where we have the five senses. We have taste, touch, smelling, hearing, and seeing. And those are the five senses that work as like an interface to the material world around us. And that's how we digest the world, is through those five senses. Now, those five senses are created based on our vibrational frequency, which was given to us at the moment of conception by our parents. Mother and father were operating on a specific frequency that overlapped, that then hit critical mass, that then started to create a magnetism that then collected cells and molecules in a baby. We were born, so we started out with the genetic conditioning from our parents. Then we were born into the world where we have social conditioning. Everybody that comes into our life, whether it's a teacher, a friend, a family member, a priest, a, uh, a cop, whoever it is, anyone you interact with is social conditioning. All of that social conditioning up until the age of about six or seven comes through, is filtered through those five senses of the conscious mind, and it's all dropped into the subconscious and stored there. It isn't until the age of eight or so that we start becoming much more critical with our filtering of what we're experiencing in the material world, and we start censoring ourselves, and we start censoring the input. But up until that point, the first six or seven years of your life, you are an open an open box, you are a sponge, you are just absorbing everything, and it's all being stored in the subconscious mind. Now, why is this important? Because the subconscious mind is 90% of our mind. It's where all of our core memories are stored. It's where our personality develops, and personality dictates behavior, action. So everything that we are, everything that, that is our personality and our actions is dictated by the subconscious mind and the storage. Now, another thing about the subconscious mind that's interesting is the past, present, future, memories, uh, all that stuff exists in the present time. So if you were in a car accident as a child or you broke an arm or you had an abusive parent as a child, that memory exists in present time in the subconscious mind. Until you change that memory, you apply a new emotional attachment to it, or you wipe it out completely, that will constantly be baggage to you. It will be a manipulation of your reality. So if you have trauma in your past, I'm gonna give you some things that I've learned. And again, I'm not a PhD, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm just a guy on a spiritual journey. So take this for what it is, but it's helped me. So we have the subconscious mind that we need to connect to because the subconscious mind is our tool to connect back to source. So let's go back a few steps. So what is source? We've discussed it in previous videos, but source is the eternal energy pool that we all come from. It is source, it is love. People call it the quantum realm, people call it heaven, people call it God. It is all just one source. It's eternal, it's all-knowing, it, it's pre-ego. Source is just all-knowing, which is why it's all love, it's all accepting. Like, it, you don't have to figure anything out. You don't have to have any duality when you're in source. Everything is one and it's experienced through love because there's no separation, there's no difference between this or that, it's all one thing, love. So 
to connect to source. And source is also the potential energy that we extract when we create into the material world. And we do that through vibrational frequencies. And vibrational frequencies are attached to our needs and our desires. So take a couple of steps back. So we have source that we all come from, that we all return to when our material bodies, when our, when our consciousness or our soul or our spirit leaves our material body, we go back to source. And then we, we just, we, we exist there in pure knowing. So in order to extract the energy and and charge that energy, right? So every, every thought, every desire, every need has a specific vibrational frequency. And as we know before, all things operating on frequency will eventually hit a certain density with that frequency, which is called critical mass. And it will then light a magnetism that will then attract molecular structures, which will then create the material works but the key to this is uh, a threefold key right to stack the deck so that we can we can move with you know in the the harmony of Dharma we can fulfill our life plan we can still have free will but you know we don't have to incarnate through reincarnation so what you what you need to do is you need to um, follow these three steps so the first step is contemplation that's where you can sit in a comfortable chair or lie down in a comfortable bed you quiet your mind and you think you go internal you you think about who you are you think about what you need what your needs are those needs oftentimes become obsessions and obsessions are are necessities that will out they they are they're just things that have to happen so after com contemplating you know, if you focus on maybe one main goal per contemplation, one main desire, need that you really, really need, and you focus on that, that there's key right there to, to, to having that narrow focus on one specific thing. Then you do visualization techniques. Visualization techniques are like creating a visual picture storyboard that you follow in step-by-step -step instructions in a visual picture form. Why a picture form? Because that's how the mind works. The mind works in pictures. The mind does not work in words or letters or numbers. It works in pictures. That's the language of the mind. And the mind is what connects to source and what manifests in the material world. So you have to have a storyboard based on that contemplation, that desire, then what's suggested is to deep dive into meditation. Meditation is where you detach your mind from your material body. In all of the prejudices, divisivenesses, all the stuff that you have in your subconscious mind that is created through the conscious filter that you bring through the material world in your, your um your DNA and all that is removed and you return to source. You connect back to source of all knowing. And when you come back, uh, contact back to source of all knowing, then you are in a position to manifest the desire goal that you set through contemplation. That goal, if you had the aff you have the affirmation enough you you repeat it enough through meditation again and again and again will hit critical mass and will collect the magnetism that then will create that desire in the material world mind over matter as above so below as the source created all things we create all things because we are part of source. We are an extension of source. We are just operating on different vibrational frequencies. So reconnecting to source, getting out of the ego, getting out of the construct, 
and re retaching to source and saying a little amen. Thank you. Thank you, source. Thank you. Helps. It really does. When you have an attachment to that desire, an emotional attachment, because you should have mind-heart cohesion as you're doing this. You need to have an emotional attachment to that desire in order to have it manifest because the mind is the transmitter to source. The heart is the receiver of that end goal. Now, why is all this important? Because if you can master the mind and the ability to implant in that mind your life plan, and it's difficult because when we're born, imagine it like this. We are eternal beings that exist in source energy, which is all knowing. We come up with a specific life plan, a goal that we want to achieve in this material world when we come down here. And then we have to be squeezed into this little can called a human body. And somewhere along that, that squeezing in, this veil of amnesia occurs. And we forget the eternity that we are. And it's our life plan, our goal, to reconnect to that source. And that in reconnecting that source gives you intuition. That intuition arises in the world around us through synchronicities. You have to be aware of the synchronicities and feel the intuition in order to stay on that trunk of your life plan and not branch off. That is how you stack the deck. That is how you stack it. Contemplation reconnects you to self, to who you are. Visualization creates a visual map to the end game, your end goal of your life plan. Meditation removes you from the material world of all of the prejudices and allows you to reconnect to source, which gave you the original life plan to begin with. Amen. Amen, source. Thank you for giving me this life plan. Thank you for allowing me to experience existence in the way that I'm experiencing on this specific vibrational frequency in this specific life form. Thank you. Thank you. Again, it's all about love and emotion and emotional attachment to all of this. You need to be compassionate. And this comes, the, the more you meditate, the more you go inward, the more you create these visualizations, the more your energy that surrounds you, that, that we, we're all energy machines. We are all pumping energy out of us. We are all directing energy. We are all surrounded. If you imagine like an invisible bubble around you of energy, positive or negative or, or neutral energy that surrounds you, and anybody that comes in contact with you can feel it. They can feel the positivity. They can feel the negativity. They can feel the fear. You can actually manipulate that. You can actually change from fearful or negative or neutral to positive, compassionate, mindful, in the present. And again, if you need to change, in the subconscious mind. So again, if you have traumas of the past, those traumas exist for you now in the present time. So unless you expunge those, I would suggest you start by attaching a new emotional attachment to those memories in your subconscious mind. And you do that again through visualization. How am I going to change it? Well, this is how I'm going to change it. I'm going to attach love to that traumatic experience. I'm going to change the frequency of that memory by applying an emotion to it other than fear or hate or anger. I'm going to apply love. Because remember, no matter what the trauma is, we are all one thing. We are all source. 
and everything that is projected into this world, all the trauma, all the good things in your life are part of that life experience that we are imparting onto ourselves to learn. It seems horrific at the time. The loss of a loved one, the loss of a child, um, being, you know, being raped, being beaten, you know, that, that trauma is, is seemingly impossible to deal with. But I'm telling you, approaching it from a source of love, reimplanting love onto those memories is a way to change your life. It keeps you on your life plan. You're no longer fearful of the future. You're no longer thinking about the traumas of your past. If you can stay in the perpetual present, what I like to call the alpha state, the mindful state, the state of, of not even thinking, but existing outside of your thoughts, being able to sit there, sit back in the, ba the back of your mind and just observe the world. Don't be proactive. Don't, what I mean by that is don't be reactive. Don't be just flippant. Don't, you know, just react. Somebody cuts you off, don't flip them off. Just realize that they've had a tough day. Maybe a tough life, maybe several tough lives. Maybe they've cycled around dozens, if not millions of times, trying to achieve their life plan and just haven't been able to do it. It's all in perspective. You know, the, I think it was Bob Proctor who worked with Napoleon Hill. Bob has got some great videos. Um, and again, nobody endorses this, this little video that I do. But Bob talks about the, the magic word is attitude. Attitude determines perception. So you can go about your life in a world of misery if that's how you want to live. Or you can change your attitude, change your perception. And you do that through the tools I mentioned. Contemplation, visualization, meditation. Once you realize that, that all of this material world is created by the ego, by thought constructs that aren't based entirely on truths of source, the amnesia of not knowing. When you realize that 80% of the population, maybe 85% of the population acts on thought, not knowing, and when you see how that's filtered into our politics, into our media, <clears throat> into our entertainment industry, it's, it's unbelievable. It's one of the reasons why people aren't connecting anymore. Because you, can, you have to connect on source, on mutual understanding. You don't connect on thoughts, on trends. You don't connect on those. Like you might think you do, but that falls away. Truth knowing which is connecting back to source that that is eternal so that's everything if you can master going along with dharma you can fulfill your life plan through free will you will never reincarnate you will never have to come back unless you choose to come back those four tent poles, let's call them, are key in our conscious and our subconscious mind, contemplation, visualization, meditation are tools to achieve our life's goal, our soul plan, our higher self put into us. So think on those things, research them. Don't just take my advice, research them. Go on the internet, find the truth, follow your instincts, your intuition. 
what is true to you because remember we're all from source but we're all operating on separate vibrational frequencies so what i'm saying here may not connect with you and that's perfectly fine that's perfectly fine i hope it does i hope it helps I hope anybody that listens to this and comes across it shares it with their friends and their family and strangers and anybody that can that can come in contact with it because my main reason for launching this spirituality through meditation is to help to be of service and to approach it from a compassionate love-based perspective so i hope everything that i've said in these videos has helped and i hope that you know, you comment, you like it, you send it along, you know, that little chain of reactions that one connects to another, connects to another, creates synchronicities in people's lives. You know, I just want to help. I want to just help. So again, this is Brian Higby, and I hope you enjoyed this. This will probably be the last podcast for a while. And leave me a line. Thank you very much. And have a great day.